Hello everyone, I hope you're well. I recently turned 27, so today I thought we'd have a bit of a chat and a birthday haul. 27 is an age I actually strongly associate with Jane Austen, and in particular with Anne Elliot, who in the novel Persuasion we, we see her at 27. And I know it's also very famous for like the Charlotte Lucas age too. As you all know, I really love rereading novels, and I'm really intrigued as to whether I will view the novel differently, or view Anne Elliot differently, being the age of 27 now. So I thought I'd start this video with what I'm currently reading slash what I'm going to start reading, which is Jane Austen's Persuasion. I know Persuasion is on a lot of people's TBRs this year, especially because of that adaptation. Um, and I have to say I did watch it and I did enjoy it, but it's just so different from the spirit of the novel and the type of book Persuasion is and the type of heroine and Elliot is too. Um, so I want to reread it and this is actually a bookishly edition or bookishly design um, and it was one of my wedding favours at um, Ben and I's wedding. Um, I just I don't know if I actually showed one in a video before so our wedding favours looked like this and they had thank you for celebrating with us Ben and Claire and we chose I think seven of our different favourite classics um, and so Persuasion was one that I kept um, but it did have a little a little slip on it. So that is what I'm currently reading at 27. Every time I kind of pass a birthday I always take what I'm reading like the first novel I read at that age very seriously um, but I think Persuasion, any Jane Austen novel is always a good choice. Normally I don't do anything for my birthday like I'm just not really into birthdays I much prefer other people's birthday than my own but this year Ben and I had two kind of little things for my birthday. The first one was to go to Tower of London and see the super bloom where they basically, the entire moat of the Tower of London is wildflowers and I love wildflowers. They're just my favourite thing, I think they're so beautiful and I'm obviously a massive geek and especially like a Tudor history geek and you can't get better than the Tower of London but when I was a little girl I always used to often have my birthdays in London and they would often be to come down to a specific thing related to history so the National Portrait Gallery just stare at the same picture of Anne Boleyn every time and to see the portraiture of Elizabeth I and I was obsessed and I think it was for my 11th birthday that I went to the Tower of London and I went to see where Anne Boleyn was executed and was a great birthday and because Ben and I obviously kind of thinking about leaving London in the next year or so we've got a little like bucket list of all of those touristy things that when you live in London you just don't do and the Tower of London was one and it made complete sense for me to go on my birthday because that's 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 what I've done on a previous birthday. The Super Bloom I'm so glad I went to see because it was just beautiful walking around and it was just a really nice day. Ben was also so keen to see ravens and we did see some and I always forget how massive those birds are. When we were at the Tower of London and just after Ben brought me two books one of which shows just how well Ben knows me because I didn't ask for this one and it is the paperback of The Mirror in the Light by Hilary Mantel. The emphasis here is on the paperback because I actually already owned the hardback of The Mirror in the Light and that's because I got it at HarperCollins when I worked there and when that book came out there was just a buzz around the office and that's the reason I have the hardback and I keep saying to Ben about how much I want to read it and I keep putting it off because I don't want to read this really hefty heavy hardback but I also want to keep the hardback because for me it signifies that time working at that company as well as the fact that it's Hilary Mantel and I love Hilary Mantel and Wolf Hall is my favourite kind of historical series and so Ben treated me to be a paperback so I can finally read it and not complain about not wanting to read the hardback. The next book from Ben is a book that I've already read and loved and it is The Six Wives of Henry VIII by Alison Weir and this is because I have an old edition of this which I've actually recently decided to recycle because it was falling apart and it was sellotaped together. I'd had it since I was like 11 or 10 and I love it and have read it lots of times but I just know that it won't withstand another reading. I also really love just the simplicity of these designs and I now have quite a lot of Alison Weir's works, the ones that I've only recently read, in these vintage re-releases so I'm glad that they all look really beautifully kind of uniformed on my shelf. But I recently read it, I think, did I reread it last year, I think? So I won't reread it anytime soon. Um, but Alison Weir, I think this is probably the best 
combined biography of the wives, I think. Um, after rereading um, Antonius Fraser and David Starkey, I think this is the one that I would recommend to people if you're looking for a biography of the wives. But a stunning book and also just a really beautiful cover. So that was my trip to the Isle of London and now I would love you to travel with me to York. I'm aware because I've now been in London for five years, there'll be quite a few of you I'm sure who didn't watch my videos when I was at university and living in York. So for context, I lived in York for four years while I was at university doing my BA at York St John and my MA at York. It is the place I truly feel at home and associate with the feeling of home that for me is York and it is also where Ben and I are planning to move back to but it is a beautiful city and I have done quite a few videos over the years including one more recently of a book shopping video around York but I thought I would show you some of the things that I bought on my little birthday trip there and also then give you a few recommendations to this city itself because it is a place I just can never get enough of and Every time I go, even when I live there, every time I pass the Minster, I took a different picture of it. It's a city that's just so rich with history and there's always something new that you can discover. Just like with the Tower of London, it's one of those things that you don't go in if you live there uh, because it's a touristy thing. Every time we go to York, Ben and I try and do something a little bit more touristy that maybe we haven't done or we haven't done for a really long time. And this time with the Merchant Adventurers Hall, which is one I've been in definitely for like a fair i've been to a vintage fair and actually that is a really old video with me and ariel walking around york but i've never experienced it or gone to actually have a look at the building so on probably the rainiest day i've ever had in york we went to the merchant adventures hall and it was really lovely and we just actually sat and read for a bit and sheltered from the rain in this really beautiful building i honestly have so many recommendations of york and quite a lot of them do revolve around food and drink the first thing I think we did actually when we arrived in New York, so we only went for like one night um, because I didn't want to go on a holiday, like I didn't really want to go somewhere that I didn't know and therefore would. When we went on our honeymoon we had an Excel spreadsheet, like we had so much we wanted to cover and I just wanted to just go somewhere that was completely chill, that I could just, I knew all of my favourite places and I knew what I wanted. And so because of that we went back to one of our favourite pubs in York which is the Warmgate Our House which has the chopping block restaurant kind of in it slash attached to it and we had a sunday roast on the sunday and um, for those of you who don't know that's also where we had our kind of wedding reception our wedding meal um and the reason we had it there is because that's where ben and i would always go on a sunday to get a sunday dinner it was like a little date and the best sunday dinner i promise you i've ever had the best sunday dinner in york i think hands down apart from the york hog roast which is also a favorite spot of mine which i'm sure we'll talk about later but we'll get our house, their sunny days are just so good, really affordable, like honestly. And the last time obviously at my wedding, I was so full of adrenaline that I did not eat because I was just, I wasn't hungry. Like I'd had a bit of a pizza at like the afternoon. So by the time of the evening when I kind of, when we met up with everybody again, I was just saying not hungry so this time I went back and had my Sunday roast and loved it. On that Sunday we also went to the York Poker House which is the best hot chocolate you'll ever have. Definitely the best hot chocolate in York. I'm, I'm, I've always been obsessed with it. In fact there are so many pictures of me as a student reading my required reading with a hot chocolate. So I now understand where all of my student loan went on on the York Poker House but 100% recommend and the perfect kind of treat for a rainy day. The other thing that York is great for is book shopping. It has some of the best bookshops I think um, and in particular Minstergate Books is my favourite bookshop I think in the entire world. I have so much sentimental like connection to this bookshop. I've been going there ever since I kind of started university and it became a kind of a little haven, a little safe space for me. Whenever I was stressed or anything was going on, I'd always just kind of sneak away into the bookshop and it was always really quiet and just had such a great selection of kind of cheaper books as well. So a lot of my books I got for university I often got there. But every time I go in, it just makes me feel at home. And I honestly, I wish I could just hide in one of the rooms and 
just kind of live there. I'll just move in, basically, is what I'd like. But that would definitely be my recommendation of a bookshop in York. Um, ben and I even had one of our wedding photographs outside of it because I was so keen to have it involved in some way on our wedding day. Now I thought I'd do a little book haul because I was also very kindly given a Waterstones voucher. I'll start with a book that is York related and is one of my favourite books and is a book that I've obviously already read and already own. But it was a gift voucher and I've wanted a different edition of this book for a really long time. And it is Jonathan Strange and Mr Noel by Susanna Clark. I've talked about this book quite a lot on my channel. It's one of my favourite books of all time. I think everybody should read it. The novel begins in York and the main scene of magic is in York. And it begins with the lines, Some years ago there was in the city of York a society of magicians. There are honestly too many reasons to like name or count of the reasons I love this book. Um, I love the illustrations. In fact, this first one is of York Minster there. I love the footnotes, the writing style, the characterisation, um, everything about it is perfectly executed and I don't read a huge amount of fantasy um, but this kind of alternate retelling of history with English magic. I honestly don't think fiction gets better than this. I first read it when I was at university in York so I think a good kind of seven, eight years ago and I really want to reread it. But the edition I currently have is too beautiful to read and I do have this a little bit in my head where I have some books that are to be kept pristine and to look at and some books that I can carry around, get bashed, break the spine and this will be my break a spine edition and I also love just how beautiful, this is the classic look of Jonathan Strange. But the edition that I have, I think I think actually Ben bought me this for another birthday. Um, it is this stunning um, edition and it is the Bloomsbury Classics that they've done. And it is gorgeous. Um, but it's so beautiful that I just don't want to break the spine. I just want it to stay pristine. It is a book that for me feels like a collector's edition of this book. And I know I could just buy the same book again or if it you know a bit like my Alice and Weir if it did get all bent I could just replace it but for some reason I've always wanted the black the classic version and a little bit like the mirror in the light the reason I haven't reread it is partly because I didn't want to ruin the edition and I know I could just read it like the ebook or something or the audiobook but I really like reading it as an actual book because of the footnotes I find it a little bit easier to read uh, especially in terms of the audio edition um, so now I have it, I'm going to reread it, I think, this winter. The next book is a bit of historical non-fiction about Elizabeth I and Catherine de' Medici, um, Blood, Fire and Gold. This is one of my most anticipated releases uh, in terms of history books and I'm really excited to read it because I haven't actually got a history book on the go because normally when I read non-fiction more than I read fiction but if I do read fiction I always have to have a history book as well so I think this is going to be my next one. The next one is Matrix by Lauren Groff and everyone has been raving about this book and um, I love historical fiction I love queer historical fiction I think I'm gonna adore this and I think that is why I've been put off buying it because I meant to buy it when it was out in hardback and then just never did because it might be a bit like a Hamnet situation like I recently read Hamnet and adored it more than anything else in the entire world and I think because it's been hyped up so much that I really put it off for a long time so I think this may happen with me and Matrix even though I've now bought it but if you've read this, please let me know what you think, especially if you also read a lot of historical fiction, because I always compare historical fiction, even though I kind of shouldn't. Um, but I think it sounds brilliant, and I know, I know I'm going to love this, so I don't know why I put off reading it. So they're all the books that I treated myself to for my birthday, but the haul doesn't end there, because York is home to my favourite shop in the entire world, which is the York Ghost Merchants. If you've never heard of the Ghost Merchants, it is a tiny shop kind of done up in very Victorian style. And because York is supposed to be the most haunted city, I believe, in Europe, it's kind of like a little souvenir of these little handmade, each one is completely unique, um, a little ghost to kind of take home with you as a little souvenir of the city. And the shop itself is just so eccentric and everything is so thoughtfully done that it's a really lovely experience. This is the first time I've ever had to properly cube, but it's also now gone viral, I think, on TikTok. And so, quite rightly, 
there is a massive queue. One thing I would recommend is what we did this time because I had a queue for over an hour. But because I've been going every time, I feel like I can't now go to York and not get a ghost, which is why we need to move there because the obsession, my collection has to stop because I now have quite a lot of ghosts because I, I keep going back to York. One thing I did while we were curing is that I sent Ben off to go to the York Hog Roast, which is my favourite takeaway in York. You get a little Sunday dinner. What I tend to do is do their vegetarian Sunday dinner, either with a giant Yorkshire pudding or this time I had two small Yorkshire puddings, which is my preferred rather than have a massive Yorkshire pudding, even though that's quite rare for me because Yorkshire puddings are kind of a huge part of my identity and my life. Um, I love a Yorkshire pudding. But this time um, we basically just stood in the queue and had the best takeaway you'll ever have. Um, Sunday dinner, as I said before, is my favourite meal. I honestly couldn't get enough. So we queued and had lunch while waiting and also went to the sweet shop, which is right next door. The shop itself is on the beautiful Shambles, which is kind of one of the oldest streets in the UK. And because it's such an incredibly atmospheric location, it really adds to the whole experience and you really kind of feel like you're going back in time but it is also extremely busy with tourists um, which I, I realise I am now one of them um, going to various different shops down there but York Ghost Merchant I know the queue is long but I would 100% recommend just sticking with the queue because I really love them. So here are the three ghosts I got this time. Um, I got my first ever big one. I've been gifted little big ones before, um, but this is my first big one that I bought. And it's actually a prototype of their St. Saviour Gate, which is where they're, they're opening a new kind of warehouse um, on St. Saviour Gate. And so they're launching a St. Saviour Gate ghost. And the design is based off the 18th century interior of their new location. And so it's white with this real cream with this really beautiful kind of slight marbling of, of green. And I just love it. And it felt really 18th century. And also because I bought my first ghost when they just opened, I kind of wanted to get something as they expand. Like I feel like I've been on this journey with them. They don't know this, they don't know I exist, but I feel very connected to them <laughs> as a shop. With my two little ghosts, normally I only buy one, but because it was my birthday and I couldn't decide between two of them, which is normally, this is like the worst shop for me because obviously they're all kind of out there for you on display and I'm really bad at making decisions. Um, but because it was my birthday, I thought I don't need to make decisions. I can just treat myself to both of them. Every time I go, I try and get one of the different kind of styles. And this one I love because it's reminiscent, I feel like, of a northern a northern beach. It feels like Whitby, this, this little ghost does. Um, and the other one is like a marble. And I do have a few marble, but I just thought it looked so kind of gothic with like the dark. It's like a really a dark navy or almost like a, a kind of a dark grey. And I just thought they looked really beautiful. Uh, so these are now kind of added to my little collection. Another thing I love about the Ghost Merchant, I've just got to mention, is their packaging. Their packaging is just so well done and everything is just so clever. The whole shop, the whole concept is really, really clever. And this time I also got a little tote bag, which is actually the perfect kind of book, book carrying size. I often use these little tote bags when I know I'm just going out to buy a book and I don't need a proper tote bag. So these are always really useful, but the whole thing, I'm just, I'm just here for it. I... I, I want to work there. I know it'd be insane. One thing they don't do anymore, and I don't know if it's because it's broken or, to be honest, the amount of traffic there are, the amount of people going in to buy ghosts, is that when I first went, I think for the first couple of years, when you buy a ghost, um, they get put on a little train and it kind of goes around the shop and you pick it up at the end. Um, but I haven't seen the train the last four times, I think. So I don't know if they still do the train, but... Uh, I do kind of miss that, but everything's just so well thought out. So if you're in York, I would recommend. I think the queue is worth it. I, yeah, I love it. One last thing to show you and a recommendation is a candle company called Ibarakum. Um, I really hope I'm pronouncing that right because I feel like I get it wrong all the time. I'm actually currently burning one of the small candles that I got just after our wedding and we got Museum Gardens. So each of their candles, their York candles are inspired and named after a particular place in York and we got museum gardens because that's where we got engaged and a lot of our pictures were in the museum gardens and outside St Mary's Abbey and they are they smell beautiful but also love the connections to different locations in York. We got the museum gardens candle last time because obviously it was a very sentimental place and we just kind of got married but the candle that I kept thinking about that I bought on this trip is their minster candle. I honestly can't even tell you how good this smells. This is the minster which is scented with lavender and rose um, and 
it smells so good. It's not, we haven't even burnt it yet and the entire flat has been smelling like it. Um, it is that strong. It's just beautiful. And obviously the Minster is one of our favourite places in York because it dominates York. Every time you turn, you can always kind of see it in the distance and it is an icon in its own right. I'm honestly a little bit in love, mainly because I'm such a sensory person that whenever I, certain memories are always attached to smells to me and it's always a big thing that when I want to make a memory, somewhere was like to attach a scent to it and so the fact that they have done that with certain places in York they've attached it and made so I would love to know why why they've chosen those particular scents for those different places I'm really intrigued by that um, but I love the connection of the location and the smell and I love that we can kind of burn burn the museum we shouldn't really burn the museum gardens um, I mean the Minster has been burnt a few times um, but really beautiful so that is the end of my birthday haul and my york recommendations if you do end up going to any of these places in york please let me know um and because it's been my birthday i feel like if you're at the end of this video please leave a birthday cake emoji i feel like it has to be done